In this video, we're going to talk about hosting a Next.js app on K3S or Kubernetes. So what's this tutorial going to look like? It's pretty simple. We're going to create an app from scratch. We're going to containerize it using Docker. We're going to create a Helm chart, which will help us deploy it to Kubernetes. And finally, we'll actually deploy it to Kubernetes and see it in action. So let's jump into the steps. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is generate a Next.js app using their generator. I'm gonna call it Next.js K3S. I'll say yes. And I'll use TypeScript, ESLint, Tailwind, no source directory. I'm not a fan of the app router, honestly. No import alias and we're good to go. First you have to CD into the directory that it created, and then you can do npm rum dev. Once that's up, you can go to localhost 3000 and there's our Next.js application. Of course, the point of this is to host a Next.js app, not design something beautiful, or even to edit the code of the Next.js app at all. But I'm gonna write a custom message just because I don't particularly love this home screen that they have here. I'll give it a couple classes to make it more interesting. Okay, cool. Now that we have that, let's work on the next part. We're going to need to create a Docker file in the same directory as our source code here and figure out how to containerize this. So I've done this before for another personal project that I have for Boom Languages, actually, if you follow the channel, I can just enter this real quick and explain. So I'm using Alpine because my image was gigantic before. Alpine makes it smaller, not that small, but smaller. I also don't want to be spied on, so I'm going to disable telemetry. I'll copy everything into the container. We'll install, but we'll omit dev packages to save even more space because we won't be installing things that we don't need. And then we'll run a build. We'll add a group for Node.js and a user, Next.js. We'll switch to the Next.js user, which is good security practice not to run as root. And then we'll do npm run start as our command. So that's all we need for our Docker file. Now what we can do is try building it. So we'll do docker build dash t tmp dot. Make sure that it works. That did in fact work. So now let's figure out where can we push this? We can log into gitlab.com. I'll log into my lovely Code and Johnny account from a previous video about how to use GitLab. And here we are, a lovely account. Haven't seen it since first time programmer five, mm -hmm. six, and seven. Good stuff. Let's create a new project for this and we're gonna call it Next.js K3S. We'll make it private. I would assume most people watching this video want it private, right? You have closed source code, you're gonna develop your app and it's gonna be awesome. Ah, I should not have done the readme. Either way, I think we already have a Git repo started here. Okay, so we can add and commit this stuff, add Docker file. And let's add a remote here. So this is a little sticky. I'm gonna allow force pushing the main branch. I'm also going to check out the main branch here and delete the master branch. So we'll use main because it's already in GitLab and I don't feel like changing it. Um, so what we can do is git remote add origin, put in the address to our repo and attempt to force push. So git push force. You gotta type the uh, setup stream part. And it seems to have worked, there it is. Our Docker file's present, all that stuff. So we have our source code on GitLab and what we're going to do is, we're just going to hand push our image into the container registry for this project. So we'll follow the instructions. Docker login registry.gitlab.com, that worked. So now we can actually take the image that we built before, which has the tag TMP and re-tag it, or we can just build it with the proper tag. So it gives us the command to do that. Let's just use what they have here rebuilding okay and now we can use the push command that they give us as well push up that image push finished if I refresh the page here now we see that our image is here and you can click that to pull it if you need to so somebody's going to do a docker pull and grab the image right but who's somebody not us the point is we need our k3s cluster to do this and they might not explicitly use a docker pull under the hood they're probably using something like container d or whatever happens but the point is how do we get k3s to do this part well let's think about that let's start by generating a helm chart for this whole project here so it'll be next js k3s helm inside of here we have charts and templates and things of that nature so what we'll do is in your home slash dot cube directory, check if you have a config file there. If you do copy it 
uh, will first of all create the home slash dot cube directory if it's not there. Now if you have an existing cube config file you're definitely going to want to back it up. So just copy that to config.backup or any other file name you'd like to give it. Now we're going to copy and replace this with the IP address of your nuke. You're going to copy the dot cube slash config file from the nuke into your home slash dot cube slash config directory. And what we'll do is edit that config file, home slash dot cube slash config. And you'll notice that the server is defined as 127001 or localhost. Let's change that real quick to pub nuke or whatever the IP for your cluster is. Save that file. And just to be sure, we will export cube config to be home slash dot cube slash config. That's the default, but in case it gets set to anything else, we'll make sure. And you can put this in your bash RC too if you want to be extra sure. Now, if we do cube control get node, we see our pub nuke is ready to go. If we do cube control get pod, we see exactly what we would see when we're logged in. And I'm on my laptop. I'm not logged into the cluster. So we're all set to go. So where were we? We were trying to create a pull secret. So in order to solve this problem, the Kubernetes documentation has our back. Let's try generating one on our account. So if you go to personal access tokens and settings, you can add a new token and I'm just going to call it K3S expiration date. I'm going to make it next year. Ah, I don't need an expiration date right now. And I don't know what all these Kubernetes permissions are. We really do need read registry. We don't really need to write it. We just need to read the registry and to be safe, I'm going to allow the Kubernetes permission, whatever this is. Hit create, copy the token, and now we can create a secret using that token. Before you do anything, make sure that it works. So do docker login registry.gitlab.com dash dash username, your username to GitLab dash dash password and paste the personal access token that you just generated. It worked, so we can go ahead and create the secret for this. It's gonna be of type docker registry, call it regcred. Docker server is registry.gitlab.com and then use the same credentials you used above in your little test. I left out the docker email part. Hopefully it still works. We have a regcred secret. Let's try redeploying. Helm uninstall app, helm install app dot. And finally, we are in the container creating stage. So it is actually pulling this image. That's so exciting. If you describe the pod, it says pulling image. Wow. Let's wait for it to pull. This is great. Okay, finally done pulling. Now, what do we do next? Let's figure out how to get the port exposed for our web service so that we can open it in our browser. The right way to do it would, of course, be to configure ingress controllers, but this is a quick little tutorial and it's already pretty long. So let's go ahead and define a node port. So we can see in the deployment.yaml, the container has an HTTP port already. That links back to the service YAML, has target port of HTTP, and the actual port value comes from values.yaml. Let's see if we can check that the service is actually running on port 80. Okay seems to actually be on 80 because it tried to download it. Okay, yeah, that worked. And index.html is, it, it contains our hello world. So we know that we're, we're trying to expose port 80. And yet, port 80 is only a cluster IP, which we cannot access from our browser. Again, this isn't the right way to do it, but it's a way to do it. We can go ahead and put a node port of 380 in here. Then go into service.yaml, give it a node port, dot values dot service dot node port. We also have to change the type to node port or else we'll get an error when we specify a node port. And that should be all we need to do. Let's uninstall and reinstall and see if that worked. Helm install app dot. Okay, so we used 30080 in our previous tutorial, so it's getting mad because it's already allocated. Let's try again with 30081. That one worked. If we get the service, 30081 is exposed. So what if we visit pub nuke? 30081. Would you look at that? Our web app is hosted and available from our cluster. So we've gone from nothing to Next.js app hosted on our cluster in K3S on our nuke. That was our goal. I'll leave the rest to you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you for the next video. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel and you can also go to pagekey.io slash sign up, give me your email, and I'll shoot you a quick message whenever there's something new going on. Thanks a bunch.